I want to talk about the uh, the reasoning behind the V8 swap. Um, and so that conversation really needs to start with, you know, what's wrong with the Trooper as is. And, you know, aside from the fact that, well, you know, the four-cylinder is prone to blowing head gaskets, that's not the whole of the issue. Um, it's really about power. You know, I've got a big family. Sometimes we haul a trailer or I need to haul a trailer or a trooper. And, you know, this truck right here, this one runs about as good as you're going to get a fuel-injected, you know, i tech four-cylinder trooper to run. And it runs good. It's not a speed demon. Um, it's sufficient, especially if you're just around town, um, you're not carrying a lot of weight. But, you know, the truck came with two 35-75-15s stock, which are small. Most guys are going to want to go to something bigger than that. And then you just you really start running into problems. You know, you want to put 32s or 33s on one of these trucks, and the four-cylinder just does not do it. It, it will not pull that off. Uh, I'm running... 265 75 15s on this truck and it's really about as much as it can handle and this motor is built i've got this motor board 40 40 over it's got an amc head it's got a jerry cam it's got the later throttle body and airflow meter uh it's got a pace setter header and so I've really done about as much as you can do without carbureting it. You know, carbureting makes a little bit of a difference. I'm not going to say it makes a huge difference, but it'll make, a, you know, a little more power with the carburetor. But um, it just doesn't cut the mustard, you know, especially when you load up a bunch of kids or if you're out on the road and you're towing a trooper behind you, through the mountains, North Carolina or California, New Mexico, the four cylinder is just insufficient. So I, uh, you know, and years ago started looking for a replacement. And I wasn't trying to get too crazy out of the box. I really wanted to find something that, you know, give me at least 150 horsepower, 200 would be great somewhere in between would be acceptable um, but you know you also have to consider the value of this truck if you're gonna spend ten thousand dollars you could buy something else you know and, and granted I mean if it's your this is what you love and it's got that sentimental value to you sure you, you can't put a cash value on that but that's just not uh, that's just not the state of mind that I approached this with. I approached it like, look, the four-cylinder trooper was made during a time when the U.S. had a federally mandated 55 mile an hour speed limit, and these things were originally designed to run around in Japan and Thailand and Indonesia on dirt roads and get good mileage, and they do all that kind of stuff well. But you get them out in Texas or New Jersey and you want to start running them at 75 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour, you know, you're winding the motor out and the four cylinder just doesn't, doesn't cut it. So I really looked at what is a cost effective swap. I thought, you know, it shouldn't be that hard to go to the junkyard and just pull a motor, something with low miles that's relatively new, and drop it in here. I mean, this, you know, guys have been doing that since the dawn of time. It used to be a lot easier, you know. Back when everything was carbureted, 
you know, my dad and my uncles and stuff, they used to drop, you know, pull a small block Chevy out of something and throw it into something that had a six cylinder in it, you know, because the bell housings were all the same and everything was interchangeable. And it was like, what, you got a fuel line and a hot wire to the coil and that's really all you needed. Um, things got really complicated in the late 90s and the 2000s. So, you know, that kind of puts a damper on everything when you're like, you know, I want to get something new with low miles out of a junkyard because that's, you know, that's cost effective, right? Um, what are you going to get that has low miles that was built in the last 10 years that is going to be easy to put into anything, really, to be honest with you. That, that was the major breakdown, is that everything is so purpose-built that nothing swaps easily to anything, anywhere. You know, you, you've got to bring the entire computer system with you, the wiring, how's that going to work so far as gauges. Now you're talking about maybe having to transfer the whole gauge cluster over, and everything just gets really complicated you know and I, I looked into a lot I mean I would say everything but obviously I'm sure I didn't hit everything but I looked into a lot of options you know um, considering that the trooper was built with the 2.8 I really thought that was gonna be the answer I thought it was gonna be a matter of swapping the front section over to the GM bell housing and then going with something that had the 60 degree bolt pattern I looked really hard at the 3800, you know, the stuff that came in the Pontiacs, like the uh, Grand Prix and stuff like that, Bonnevilles. It's just not easy to do, man. You know, the, the throttle's facing the wrong direction, it's up against the firewall, and there's no... You can do it. The problem is, you start nickel and diming every little part, you know? You can't just buy a car because it's always cheaper just to buy a whole car. Buy a whole car and jerk everything out that you need. Well, when you can't buy a whole car and solve that problem because, well, you know, uh, I need a 3800, but in order to make it run right, I'm going to need to carburetor it. Okay, so now you're talking about buying either an old intake manifold and an old distributor and then the whole all the accessories and all that stuff I mean try to find that stuff first off you know and I wanted something that was easily reproducible it's great if you're gonna do a one-off swap it's like hey this is just me and this is just my trooper I don't give a rat's ass about the rest of the world and how they're gonna solve their problems but that wasn't my objective my objective was to find something that could be done and reproduced by anybody at any time anywhere in the world quickly and easily um, taking a 3800 and putting it in a trooper is not something that's very easy to do and so I kept running into that same roadblock with everything that I looked into you know um, nothing was just a jerk it out of one car drop it into another car fit and I really didn't want to do a V8 um, I would have loved to have found a four-cylinder. I wanted something that would run smooth um, and quiet. You know, I did finally kind of just settle that, well, a V6 is going to have to be the way to go because it's the right size and the right displacement. I wasn't trying to get huge. I didn't want to put a 5.7 liter, you know, Chevy motor in here. And um, I couldn't find a V6 that would really do what I wanted it to do. You know, the 3.4 would have been okay if you could make a 3.4 run in a four-cylinder trooper without a lot of hassle. Uh, you can't even get a 3.4 motor to run in a 2.8 trooper without a lot of hassle. So you try doing that into a four-cylinder and it just compounds those problems. Um, I had a conversation with my buddy Pat, who's a dyno tuner, and he explained to me why the 3.4 is so hard to get to run right and it has to do with the limitations 
of the uh, throttle body injection that they use on the 2.8. So I understand that now. I get it why why they can't. You know, there's no airflow meter, so it's all just pre-mapped, and you start changing um, the displacement, and it just wreaks havoc on all that. Um, and you can say, yeah, great, well, just carburetor it. Okay, that's fine. Price out a 3.4. Price out all the accessories, find yourself an intake manifold, and price out the carburetor and the distributor and coil and all that nonsense and get back to me. Because I've done it. That's not the solution. Um, then I got to thinking, my buddy Colin said to me, you know, you really ought to put that Lexus V8 in it. And this was actually a couple years ago. I kicked myself now because I could have had this done a long time ago. I immediately dismissed that suggestion for many reasons. First of all, I was like, it's a Lexus motor. I'm looking for something that's cheap. I'm looking for something that's easy to get parts for. Colin's point was if things are bulletproof reliable, they run forever. They don't leak oil. They don't give you any problems. They're super simple to maintain. I just made a lot of assumptions based on the name Lexus. One day I was thinking and I thought, you know, it would really be nice if I could just find a small V8. I'm not talking about, you know, LS 5.3 or a Ford, you know. I want something, I was thinking small, like find me a, you know, whatever, I don't know, a Rover V8 or something like that. But again, that stuff's not easy to get. But my motivation was, if you can find something that's small and light, um, I don't like the sound of a V6 either, you know, and the way that a V6 revs and, and uh, V6 was not was not really doing it for me, you know. Uh, 4.3 was something that was on my radar for a really long time too. I thought a 4.3 would be easy enough, and Carrie Sharon did the 4.3 swap. I rode in that truck; um, it runs great. And that's probably not a really bad idea still. Um, it could be done relatively easily now that Kerry's done it. But again, he still, you know, he had to carburetor it. And so it was a custom intake, you know, custom exhaust. I, I, he did a straight axle swap on that truck because he was not, you know, because he's Kerry. But um, there were problems with interference with the differential, you know changing the oil and, and I, I think that the, one of the main reasons that he had to straight axle swap that truck was because the starter went out and he realized that it was easier to pull the diff to change that starter um, and I think once he had the diff out you know this, this is carrier you're talking about so he says if I'm pulling a diff out you can bet that this truck's gonna get a straight axle swap so he went that route um, I think the 4.3 would probably be a pretty viable option. It just wasn't, um, it wasn't what I was after. So I think that what really made it click for me was um, Jerry made the comment when we were discussing the four cylinder transmission. He said, uh, you know, yeah, that transmission, you can bolt anything that you want to it. Um, the Toyota A transmission and they used that thing in the Tundras later with the V8, that big V8. And so I, you know, okay, cool. Well, so you start looking into that and you realize that the big V8 he's talking about is the three or two UZFE motor, which was a cast iron, you know, later version of the, uh, the one UZFE. And then I found out that that's the transmission that they used in the LS400. And so now I've got all this stuff, you know, Colin's telling me this is the motor I should put in. Now I'm finding out that you literally can just bolt it right to the automatic that's in a first gen trooper with a four cylinder. So, you know, I'm still thinking though, well, you know, I'm sure they're not cheap. Well, I was wrong. They're really cheap, actually. The motors are so reliable, you can find them on eBay all day long. You can buy an LS400 cheap. Um, 
if it's, you know, the interior's a little bit tired or the paint's not so shiny because it's a luxury car. And a luxury car is not luxurious when it doesn't look good and, you know, the power windows don't work or whatever. So you can buy a running, driving LS400, especially if it's got a little body damage on it, for $100,000. So I did begin to look into it and I found a couple guys on YouTube that were starting these motors up in their garage on the floor. You know, one guy had one on the floor on a pallet, another guy had one sitting on an engine stand and you watch those videos and these are just dudes, you know what I mean? This guy's just like, okay, so I twisted these three wires together and hooked it to the positive of the battery, hooked a fuel line to it, I've got a fuel pump going here and they hit the key and it runs. And that's, that was kind of the turning point, I think, because I thought, you know, that's really the kicker, is how am I gonna get this thing to run inside of a Trooper? And if you can make the thing run on an engine stand in your garage, then I can certainly drop it in the engine bay of a vehicle and find a hot wire to wire that to. And then, so as I started researching it, you know, the wiring looms from both cars, I found so many similarities. Uh, because, you know, these two cars were manufactured in the same place at the same time. So they're using a lot of the same technology, a lot of the same types of parts. I mean, the oil sending unit screws right into the Lexus motor. The coolant temperature sending unit unscrews right off of your four-cylinder intake and screws right into the intake on the LS400 motor. You know, uh, the tachometer, the way that the Lexus runs the tach, they run the left bank as a four cylinder and the right bank as a four cylinder. So you literally take the wire right off of the V8 and attach it to the wire that goes to the tack and your tack is accurate. I mean, so many things I discovered just came together so simply. Um, then it just became a matter of, well, you know, I can bolt it to an automatic. How hard is it gonna be if I try to bolt it to a five speed? And, uh, so I did some looking into that, you know, custom adapters or whatnot, and um, it was actually really simple. You know, I did have to design an adapter and I'd do a little bit of work to get the clutch worked out, but it was actually really simple. I mean, compared to a lot of other options that I had looked into, it worked. And so the way it all worked out, um, you know, I bought two LS400s. One I paid 300 and one I paid 400 for. Um, the off the shelf parts that you get either at the auto parts store or eBay, a couple bolts you have to get from Fastenal or whatever, you know, I've got all the part numbers and all the descriptions of those parts. That stuff adds up to about 450 bucks. I had an adapter made by a local guy and I built the engine mounts myself and so you know I'm in this whole thing like 1500 bucks and I just don't think that you're gonna do a swap with basically any other motor and certainly not one that's gonna do what this one does you know I've got a motor now that's all aluminum. It doesn't weigh any more than the four cylinder did. It puts out twice the power, more than twice the torque. And it's on Ward's 10 best engines of all time. Bulletproof reliable. These things go, you know, there was one on YouTube that uh, Matt Sarah, I think his name is, has a million miles on it. They're regularly known for going 400, 500,000 miles. So, you know, when you can do this swap for less than rebuilding a 2.6, that's, you know, what else do you really need to know? 